Hey guys, what's up? So all the rage these days is like augmented reality. And uh, if you're looking to get into something that is on the ground level, I would say not really even ground level at this point because it has been going strong for a couple of years now. But um, I really think augmented reality is going to be something that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And um, there, there's multiple examples of like, you know, just recently how we've had you know so much success within the augmented reality um sphere and like one of them is that you know the pokemon go obviously was a complete like people still love it i still work with people that play that game and um and it's cool yeah it was a little gimmicky or whatever but you know the, the fact of the matter is you're having apps now that are interacting with your real environment and that is what augment and augmented reality is so if you're using your phone then it can display you know 3d things and and maybe even if you're in like a specific area it could give you historical facts things like that um but it does it, in, you know, in a much more, I would say, cool manner. Like when Mark Zuckerberg the other day was giving a demonstration where Facebook, where they're kind of copying off of uh, Snapchat and what they do with augmented reality, um, was showing how to like fill up a room with water and with M and M's and things like that, and or with Skittles. But the way they were doing that is because obviously they had a lot of uh, artificial intelligence involved in the technology that was looking at an image and figuring out, you know, aspect ratios and things of. of you know where the floor is, where the walls are, and then you know being able to use that information in order to then um, you know add obviously layers upon layers of whatever sort of a, uh, ingredient you want, and that takes a tremendous amount of work obviously because um, artificial intelligence it still is in its infancy, but clearly um, photo recognition is becoming something that is uh, you know very 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 popular I would say. Uh, and, and just it, it's come a, a long way like you look at snapchat you can open your mouth It obviously can detect your eyes your head your mouth and it doesn't matter uh, you know what 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 race or um, or Creed race creed whatever you know what I'm talking about basically it doesn't matter if you're big you're slim you know whatever it, it still is smart enough to recognize where your eyes are where your nose are where your mouth is and everything so uh, and that that's pretty impressive especially you know considering the fact that that is like almost the entire uh, entire like thing that is Snapchat, I would say. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but from what I've seen, that is like the you know the most the the, the coolest thing about Snapchat, in my opinion. Uh, so very similar to like Pokemon Go and everything. So like the, the question is though, how do you actually get into programming and getting into this augmented reality uh, sphere? And, and and that is where things I think are a little bit trickier because there are different augmented reality platforms out there. Um, one of them being this uh, Wicketude that I found. Um, so you can start messing with augmented reality through a software development kit, uh, which is going to save you obviously a tremendous amount of time because a ton of research and everything has already been put into this. And it's an SDK that you can use and then and capitalize on. But the problem is, is that because things are so much in their infancy and so much money has been poured into augmented reality, plus there's such a strong demand for it, it's ridiculously expensive for developers especially you know newbie developers to just jump in and actually be able to build a product um, and and start making money with it but I think eventually we'll get there that's why I, I would advocate you know trying to to get in now and start understanding the basics of augmented reality and what languages are best to use with it and things like that that way when prices start dropping down you're still gonna have a tremendous amount of knowledge and uh, and leverage in order to be able to, to you know make your next product and everything uh, but these are in euros, which are even more expensive than the dollar, at least the last time I checked. And this is way more than I could uh, pay probably for a, a project that isn't ever going to make me any money. Um, now, the good news is, is like, you know, Unity Engine is starting to support augmented reality as well. And Unity Engine is, is much more geared towards beginners. But if anybody has ever tried Unity and you're a beginner programmer, you know it's still not an easy task. It's very difficult. Um, but with Unity, there is um, there is the fact that you can start building for augmented reality and everything. Uh, so here you can even see that they're mentioning the Microsoft HoloLens, which is uh, possibly going to be something that that could be cool. It could be another Microsoft flop, but uh, I think you know I think it looks okay. I really do. It, it's it's kind of weird that we're going to go around wearing our headsets and everything, but uh, and the fact that the headsets are like thousands of dollars, somebody could easily jack you for, for your headset if you're just walking down downtown Richmond uh, like I do. But, um, but if, you, if you're in a safe environment and, and like you're in like a, a classroom or something, if the, if the technology comes down and everybody's able to wear this and, and we're able to learn in like, you know, a fully 3D immersive kind of world, 
uh, around us, which is a little bit more convenient, I think, than uh, possibly a full virtual reality experience. I mean, there, there's definitely potential there. There, there really is. Google Glass clearly failed. Uh, we'll see what the HoloLens does. Um, but anyway, going back to the Unity engine, they have something called uh, this Vuforia, which also uh, does not list any pricing, which is... Um, you know, enough to make you probably concerned that, that it's probably very expensive. Like, here is some some pricing and everything, but, you know, 499 one time uh, per app. That's not bad, actually. And then $99 a month per app. Uh, you'll have to see what all this stuff comes with because that's just for the consumer level and not enterprise. Enterprise, they only list the price. So if you're, like, a business trying to utilize some of this stuff, probably going to be spending millions, I would think. But, um, all right, so yeah, beyond that, like, what are the best languages? Now, with Unity, because it's easier, you could use C-sharp, um, or you could even use JavaScript. I would recommend C-sharp with, uh, with Unity just because there's more, uh, there's more examples with C-sharp um, on Unity than there are with JavaScript. But you can see, um, you know, C-sharp is a development language that's built on top of .NET, which is Microsoft's runtime environment. Um, so you can actually use Python, Java, and a bunch of other different languages that all compile down to this, uh, what they call the CLI within the .NET infrastructure. But C Sharp is the most popular language that's used for that. But you can use that with Unity. It makes it much easier um, because what is the, the alternative? Really, when you're looking at like the core of these engines, you're looking at languages that are written in like C and, uh, and C++. So um, if, if you're going to get into like the core of the language, it might be a good time to learn C um, because that, that is ultimately what is making these, uh, these augmented frame uh, SDKs and everything a, a reality, even more so than, than Java and C plus, uh, I'm sorry, J Java and C sharp. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12 week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this, in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Hey guys, this video is also sponsored by Eduonics Learning Solutions and they have a website called eduonics.tv uh, where you can sign up and register. If you, if you sign up, um, just by clicking sign up here, you can see that they do have different uh, price options, but if you enter the coupon code uh, Chris Hawks, you can save money and let's go ahead and try this here apply congrats you get a flat discount of $45 so that is the coupon code that you want to use Chris Hawks to sign up for Eduonics Learning Solutions at eduonics.tv and by using the Chris Hawks coupon code you get two months free as well as 50% uh, off on uh, the year so make sure you guys check that out um, also they do have a YouTube channel as well and the website or at um, channel name is Eduonics Learning Solutions and the YouTube channel is right here so make sure you guys subscribe. They have a lot of different topics. They're going to talk about the latest technologies. It's all via online so it's not in person. That makes it more convenient uh, in some cases for some people depending on where you are geographically and um, you know they have all kinds of different tutorials everything from Vue.js, Angular, React, everything. So uh, make sure you guys check them out and I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Bye.